The opinions expressed are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the official positions of the sponsors, advertisers, or presenters. Advertising does not imply endorsement by the sponsors and presenters. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Lighting Controls Podcast. We have a very interesting episode for you today. Webster and I are going to shake things up and do something a little different, and we'll see how it goes. But before we start, let me remind everyone that today's episode is presented by the LCA, the Lighting Controls Association. And it's financially supported by the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Additionally, check out our pod, our website, lightingcontrollspodcast.com. We've got all of our episodes, a news feed, and a merch store if you want to support the podcast. But until then, let's uh, let's get into it. So yeah, this is a, a new effort. Uh, we've had some feedback that our episodes can sometimes be a little lengthy, and so we're we're <laughs> dialing it back to you know a, a shorter, bite-sized amount of time. Uh, it's just going to be Ron and I. Um, but that's the thing is that we're, we really like the feedback that people are giving us about this ep- yes. you know podcast series. Um, and so, you know, please keep it coming. We, we definitely want to provide a, something that you want to listen to on a daily, uh, not a daily basis. That'd be cool if it was daily, but, um, on a regular <laughs> basis anyways. Uh, so, but I mean, you know, as far as lighting controls goes, I mean, from your perspective, Ron, as, as an integrator, I mean, you know, where are we right now with lighting controls? I feel like I've asked that everybody but you. I know. And and I, I hate to say it, but I agree with everybody else that we've talked to. It really <laughs> does feel like the Wild West sometimes. And yeah. and it's tough because there's there's so much happening. Every manufacturer does it differently. Everyone has a different way to handle things. And then mm-hmm. at the end of the day, from my perspective as an integrator, a lot of the success of the project and not just, you know, getting it to the point where the end user is happy, but from the front end really has a lot to do with when we're brought into the picture, right? If we don't get brought in until after the project sold, I can't do anything. I can't assist the designer and say, Hey, in my experience, this has worked out better than this when we do it like that. Or have you considered option B instead of C, right? Like, I can't do that if we're brought on after. And if we're brought in after the electricians already started installation, it's mm-hmm. the same thing. I can jump in front of it and say, hey, you guys should really be wiring the system like this, or it needs to be done this way. But now they've got to work backwards and fix something right. else. So from my perspective, right, as an integrator, the earlier we can be brought into a project, the better. And I understand that's very difficult because unfortunately, it's becoming more common, but up until now, a lot of end users were looking at that going, who is this extra person? What is this extra cost? Not understanding until unfortunately, you know, not always, but in the right. off chance that they have an unsuccessful project. So it's, it can be, it can be Well, tough. and I think that, I think that that's the unfortunate situation with integrators too right now is that they often are brought on because they need if they're they're being asked to fix a problem and then suddenly their value is realized and so it's not a preemptive effort it's an after the fact effort that the integrator then becomes that expert that people go to and go and relied upon in the future because you know basically i don't want to have that bad experience again um you know i I feel like that was sort of how your relationship with a contractor that ultimately led to us starting to work together you know you were in their back pocket because of the fact that prior to you getting involved in a project things had gone so poorly that the the trust of that owner which owned several properties in in our area um had been broken the they they basically were saying you know this is your last chance and they called on you and said hey we really need to make sure that this goes flawlessly yeah yeah and 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 as an integrator being brought in it it also is interesting on how you're brought in are you brought in Mm -hmm. by the end user directly are you brought in by the electrical contractor are you brought in by the distributor that's happened too um right and it really matters how you're brought in because at the end of the day especially depending on where they are in the project the last thing you want to do is throw anybody under the bus 
right? right. Be the last thing you want to do. But if I'm brought in by the owner, I have to be I have to still be honest with them. I can't lie to them to protect the electrician, but I also need mm -hmm. to protect the electrician. I need right. It's this industry is very relationship driven, as we all know. Yes. And, and you, you have to try and maintain those relationships, but you also have to help whoever's hiring you to assist them to get them to their goal. So it, it can right. be a very fine line to walk. Well, I think to your point, you know, depending on who hired you, that could put you in a very awkward position of saying, oh, yeah. this was done incorrectly and here's who's responsible for why it's done incorrectly. And because yep. of that, you've just identified public enemy number one, who's going to end up having to pay for the rework. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it can be really tough. And I really try to avoid that unless it absolutely like has to be the thing. I There's been right. plenty of times where I've gone to the EC directly and say, hey, look, we've got these issues. We can fix this. I can help you. It's going to take us, you know, a, a smaller job. It's going to take us two hours. We can bang this out. Right you know, I don't have, we don't have to say, oh, they screwed all this up. Let's just fix right. it. Everybody yeah. wins. Right. And, and right. because at the end of the day, you don't, the last thing I want to do is go back to the end user and say, oh, the electrician screwed it all up. And now right. that may cost that electrician the next job and the next job. And that could be millions and millions of dollars. I, I yeah. don't want to do that to them. <laughs> That's a whole, well, and, here, and, right? and so I think the other thing that, that maybe isn't obvious to a lot of people when it comes to lighting controls is that there's no, it, you know, it's, it's kind of detective work when you're trying to go after the fact and figure out what happened and why things happened the way they did. And so you're, you're never 100% certain why things are the way they are, but you do know yep. how to fix them. So, you know, it, it could have been that, you know, there is like a clear line of like, here's the written note by the person who admitted they did the wrongdoing, but that's going to be so infrequent that it's like, okay, I, I have a strong suspicion that this is ha how it happened, but it's much easier and, and more beneficial to be collaborative about it and say, okay, this is what's wrong. Let's fix it. Here's how we're going to fix yeah. it. You know, and there are catastrophically bad situations, for instance, where um, somebody applies power to something that wasn't ready to get power or puts the wrong yep. voltage in or, or something, something really chaotically happens. And as a result, yep. expensive equipment needs to be replaced. And that's, that's certainly something that is completely out of our hands. But um, yep. otherwise, in a lot of cases, it's just like, okay, yeah, this, this wasn't done the way, or you didn't order the right piece of equipment or who knows what happened. Um, but the solution can sometimes be very simplistic, at least because of your expert knowledge. Yeah, and, and I think you, you, you said it best that it's a collaborative effort. And if, if we can, I, I know we've hammered this home a hundred times, and I'll hammer it home a <laughs> hundred times more. I don't care if you're a designer or a specifier, work with the front end on whether it's the manufacturer, if you're dealing with that single entity or, or an integrator, you know, find a way to get that person involved, talk to the end user, say, Hey, here's the reasons I'd like X person on the project and have that conversation. The electrician can do the same thing. The, the contractor mm -hmm. can, can bring us in as well and say, Hey, we don't understand this stuff. We got the drawings. We understand how to physically wire it, but we don't understand it. Can you give us a hand, you right. know, from the owner's perspective, you know, if you've had a bad experience, use the resources around you. It could be the local rep. It could be a third party like us and engage that person to say, hey, we'd really like to have someone to have oversight on this to help us make sure this goes well. And especially as these mm -hmm. projects become more and more complex with multiple systems, because the last thing anyone wants at the end of the day is the handshakes between system A and B to not happen properly because both manufacturers line ended here and no one picked up that middle gap. Now, just, just to fuel my curiosity and probably the curiosity of other people, you know, have you ever been like received a phone call or an email in which you went, nah, I'm not going to help them out. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, oh man. 
it's definitely happened, but at the end of the day, it always gets the better of me and I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Right. There's been times where I'm like, I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'll call the person or I'll talk to them. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it's, it's usually well, because think... there was a bad experience before and it happens to all of us. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, an established relationship maybe, but like, if it's, if it's a new person who's like, I need help. You know, I get those calls all the time. I'm sure you do too. There's so many people in our industry who who get those calls and we want to help. You know, yeah. we're not going to begrudge you for calling us and saying, hey, can you help me out here? We may say, I'm not the right person. You know, call somebody else. Yes. Here's, here's like a whole list of people you should contact. But in, yeah, and that happens. Day, yeah, it happened just the other day. And this was, a, this was a project actually in Virginia. It was a brand new project. Guy reached out. I spent 15 minutes on the phone with him, talked him through his project, talked him through some ideas. And at the end of it said, I'd love to help you. I'm in New Hampshire. You're in Virginia. <laughs> I'm sure there are other local resources to you who are just as capable of handling this project who are going to cost you less because I have yep. airfare and, and, you know, right. <laughs> per diem and hotels that they're not going to have. And, yep. and at the end of the day, if you want us to work with you on the project, I would be happy to, I'm not going to tell you no, but there is likely a closer resource who can respond faster at a more right. cost effective price than I can. Now, and I, I think that that's something that I, I really want people to hear is that, we will never not answer your phone calls. So, you know, even if it's, you know, the zero hour before the documents go out or something, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll say, you know, wish you had called me sooner. But, you know, even if it's just a question, even if it's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Help me, help me out here. Like, right. Love those and, calls. and as a, as a dealer integrator, right. I, I, I get calls all times of night, weekends, it doesn't matter, right? We we are a service oriented company, it, right? I get calls all the time for issues and I've got to talk to customers. And my wife and family are very understanding of the fact that it may be 11 o'clock on a Friday and I've got to go potentially leave and go to Boston to go deal with this thing. Or I'm going to spend an hour on the phone trying to troubleshoot it with them because, you know, they can, they can get me on the phone and I'm going to talk them through it. Right. Like you said, at the end of the day, we all want to do everything we can. And I'm going to do everything I can to help you. And I'm not going to leave you in a lurch because that, that doesn't look good for any of us. And it, it may not be a project we installed and that happens. But, you know, as a, as a local resource for, you know, multiple manufacturers, it's very easy for me to assist somebody. No, totally. And so, you know, I, I think that that's really the the conclusion of this particular episode is, is really, you know, we, we are a resource. And so, you know, hopefully in the future, we're going to see integrators more and more involved or startup techs, or, you know, we're, we're also yep. working on the definition of that in our committee, but, yep. um, you know, I think the, the goal here is just awareness and, and, you know, even if we're not the right person, we'll let you know. Right. And at the end of the day, there is somebody who will take your call and is willing to help you out. And, and it doesn't yeah. have to be someone like it, it, it could be the rep. It could be the manufacturer. Right. There is right. somebody that is got a 24 hour hotline. There is somebody who can assist you and will assist you regardless of the installation and what they did. Right. So be, just mm -hmm. know that those resources are out there and don't be afraid to utilize them. That's that's probably the key takeaway. So before we go over any more time and continue to give people longer episodes than they want, we will end it there. And I will remind everyone that today's episode is presented by the LCA, the Lighting Controls Association. And if you want more episodes like this, and you all, sorry, Webster, I <laughs> no, it's you a cool. curveball. It's cool. <laughs> but if you guys want more episodes like this and you have specific ideas or we don't give a lot of opinions on this show, but if you're interested in some of our opinions or how we feel about certain things, shoot us an email, send us some ideas, let us know. You want to be a guest? Hit us up. We'd be happy to have you. Definitely. And this episode is financially supported by the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, or NAILED. And check out our website. If you don't have our contact information, it's found there. Or, you know, you can check us out on LinkedIn if you found this, this episode via LinkedIn. Um, we try to market ourselves as best as we can, but get the word out. If, if you know of somebody who might be interested to be on the show or has a thought about lighting controls, we entertain everything that comes our way. Um, 
But otherwise, until then, thanks so much for joining us. And Ron, thank you.